Hey guys, this is your host Alupam Tomar and welcome to the Speculative Monk Show. Hey guys, welcome to the Speculative Monk Show. I'm your host Anupam Tomar. And right now as we speak, I'm looking at a article which is written on businesswire.com and interestingly it says the global photographic services market research estimates a 44.07 billion market for the photography industry. Welcome Rohit, welcome to the Speculative Monk Show. You, you are you. a great voice of photography in the country and obviously you have vast experience in photography and now recently you've also paved your way into the digital space of photography. A very warm welcome to you again. Thank you again. Rohit, I just want to get into a question straight away, which is, which is nothing surprising at this point in time as we see there is so much digital content on the web and whether it's uh, websites, whether it's the apps, whether it's various interfaces on different devices, you know, the commercial photography today is simply ruling the social media space. And this is seemingly helping designers and creatives uh, achieve amazing targets and results for their clients, for their own projects. And this includes students and aspiring designers who may be uh, from a completely non-creative background because they're looking at startups for themselves. Can you bring in this uh, perspective of what is this transformation that has suddenly happened in the last year, year and a half, perhaps two years? And where is it stemming from? And why is this incremental growth suddenly appearing in every single sector of the society where photography is playing uh, a role in pretty much everything that we have today? Uh, first of all, an excellent question to address because uh, this question will answer uh, everybody uh, from a businessman to a designer to a photographer to an entrepreneur who is starting his own business to anybody who wants to create courses on social media and everybody. Uh, photography has been very, very dominant for several years um, as an image which showcases your product, your service, your brand to the people. But uh, lately, in the last one and a half, two years, uh, everything being shut down every, and everybody being at home, yeah. the idea that you cannot meet anybody, you cannot have a face-to-face -face conversation, you cannot share your product uh, visually to somebody yeah. on, on a physical platform. The social media platforms have uh, taken uh, the main role and everybody who wants to sell their product or a service or their voice or um, any particular talent which they have in, as an artist uh, can be communicated on an online platform to everybody around the world. So photography as an image or the moving image is the only way you can confront uh, your viewer your audience, your client and uh, that has become very very effective because of the COVID shutdown and has brought people closer. You are directly interacting with them, you are directly seeing their products, you are directly seeing the essence of everything which is uh, you know in the image uh, yeah. they are showcasing through their service or their product. Right, right. So Rohit, uh, you know, we've, we've actually had the uh, opportunity to work together a few years back and I know you've got a very different list of clients, you know, uh, you know you've got uh, all the uh, commercial uh, brands out there, uh, name it. And I remember having this conversation with you back in the day that uh, how do you get more clients and, and I guess it has probably become a lot easier, maybe, maybe not, but uh, can you help us understand how commercial photography is influencing the voice of your new clients through digital means? And also, uh, a sort of a connected follow-up question to that would be, um, 
what are you doing in your own capacity to make sure that you're still getting enough projects, you're still making uh, you know, uh, enough connect with your clients and keeping those relationships that you've built over the years? Uh, Anup, the market has evolved uh, in a very, very big way. And what we were doing, or uh, an artist, what he was doing two years back, has completely shifted today. So uh, I could interact with my clients, I could share my work with them, I could have a cup of coffee and meet them personally and create a relationship with them uh, was the way you could uh, you know, uh, move ahead. Yeah. Now, because none of the clients is actively involved in meeting you or seeing your work, you have to take the effort to promote yourself and reach them. Now, one of the biggest questions which comes to everybody is that, uh, you know, how do we go ahead and meet people and what is the type of work we do for them now? Because everybody is shut inside and many are limited, many have yeah. limited resources, many of them do not have the budgets to work. So if I had 100 clients, which I had, uh, you know, been servicing and meeting for last 15 years out of the 100 clients if I realized only 20 want my services right now and 80 do not have the budget or do not have the strength for a campaign or uh, you know promotion of that magnitude yes yeah. uh, would I be happy only working with 20 or do I want to look for more people who right now want to engage and get my services so my answer is yes definitely I would like the opportunity which has been created to meet and find new people who are looking for me to provide them the service. Right. And, and how do you fast track that process? Because uh, if I understand this correctly, uh, there's, there's this certain convergence of photography tools with digital tools. And by that, I mean digital marketing tools, how you can leverage those to get new clients, to get new work, and also perhaps uh, put your work across to other people. How do you fast track that entire process? If you can give us uh, a kind of an understanding into that space as well. So uh, uh, my belief and uh, my idea is that, that as impactful or powerful your product may be, unless and until it reaches the right audience who wants that product, that pro product is of no value. Uh, while I was in the active market before COVID, I knew who my clients were, mm -hmm. where they were sitting, and these are the people who wanted my services. So I exactly knew where to go, meet them, and showcase my work, and get mm -hmm. work in return, uh, which helped them and me both. But once you go online, how do you look for your clients? You, the, the client, uh, the online market is completely mixed up. You have the creatives, you have the art buyers, you have regular clients. You create a product and then you market it to the people who are looking for your product through specific strategies and tools which a marketing, um, uh, you know, I would use the word course or a marketing um, uh, method yeah. which we can use and get them to see our work and in return work with them. So everybody has to understand that now we are not in a passive market. We have to actually actually actively engage ourselves and find the people who are looking for us through all the tools which are available to learn, upgrade our skill set, learn and use them to share our work with all the clients who are waiting for us to help them. Right. And I think uh, there, there was this conversation we were having earlier because uh, I, I kind of uh, remember this uh, just before we got the setup. Uh, for this podcast, uh, you, you were talking about how people can simply automate these tools and uh, you can go back to your core work, which is photography and perhaps uh, everything connected with it, all the peripherals, whether it's uh, tabletop photography uh, or uh, other sorts of photography, uh, which which could be uh, stop motion because you're an expert at that, I know. And we'll, we'll come to that as well in, in, in a sort of short uh, bit of time, but uh, tell us, uh, if, if automation is, 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 the, is the new way forward, uh, is that a relief for you? See, uh, I think um, um, automation really helps you so that you can focus on your core subject. Yeah. Uh, consider 
uh, I will just give you an example that I like to post new results and what I am achieving uh, you know through my photography and share it with the people who are looking for it instead of going every now and then on the platform and posting it if I consider doing two posts a day that means 14 posts a week and I create all 14 posts mm -hmm. and I automate them to be on the platform at those particular times every day for the whole week I know my information is being put on the platform is reaching the people whom I want to at the same time I am doing the work which I want you to. could be just doing so these, there are a yeah. lot of marketing tools which are available yeah. for people to automate emails automate their uh, images on different platforms and uh, understand that they can use their time so you can do this all in one go mm -hmm. and you know that now you have the time you can focus on the work or the other webinars or other you know education methods how yeah. you want to reach people or create something for people uh, that's how automation is really helping them you right. are in control of your time yeah and you can much more yeah and you do not have to worry that you missed uh, you know this this is interesting feeding uh, the information which people really need right so you could be you could be reaching to clients through automation you could be selling your photography prints through automation you could also be uh, selling your well you could also be uh, putting across all your uh, images and posts that you uh, desire as a brand or as a creative uh, which could be informative it could also be more on advertising uh, sort of space and once you automate that perhaps on a, on a weekend or something you sit and you plug in all the data and then it does it for you through the week wherein you could be sitting and doing your core work. That's, that's brilliant uh, time efficiency uh, in the space of digital uh, era, uh, which, which I think is here to stay, I believe. And that kind of comes to a, a question uh, which uh, a lot of my guests and audiences uh, perhaps would like to uh, uh, you know, get answered through uh, your, your experiences in, in the recent past. And that is, uh, how do you strategize this change, this transformation from being, uh, let's say, and this could be anyone who is aspiring to be a new photographer or even a visual artist. And mind you guys, this podcast uh, is special for all of us because uh, everything for us usually starts with uh, a visual uh, connect. And as creatives, you know, whether we are illustrators, product designers, or UI UX experts, we are always looking at references and visual uh, triggers to kind of get ourselves uh, going uh, creatively and get our juices kind of, uh, you know, uh, going. So that's one of the reasons why I, I felt and I strongly felt that photography would be a good, uh, good kind of initiation into uh, this, this, this podcast. And also because digital uh, is, 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 is a kind of a tool which uh, is kind of seamlessly now part of it. So how should young aspiring designers, uh, including those uh, who have spent decades in this industry and uh, students who are uh, part of the creative industry, who have just gotten into their internships and you know, so forth, new jobs, or they're still part of the university curriculums. What do you think should be the right strategy to take this into the next two to three years or even five years down the line. How, how do you see this as a strategy and what, what, do, we, what do we really do with it? So, uh, uh, you know, I can divide this question into three parts. Firstly, if I include, uh, if I start with the students or amateurs uh, who are creative, several of them uh, just out of college, uh, you know, always have a debate in their head. What is it that they want to pursue uh, creatively? Do they want to go into fashion design or do they want to become photographers or do they want to become sculptors or do they want to you know do graphic design so consider that you know um, you have a flair for photography and uh, you know what you're doing creatively is not really moving you inside or you're not getting the enthusiasm or energy and you realize that you know photography is the thing which really pumps me up I think the first and the foremost important thing is to do a course in photography you know which uh, you know brings a little more clarity in the market which you want to pursue, uh, have the skill set, create a little place where you can do it on a daily basis, enhance your skills and with the skills, you know, uh, through these courses or through masterminds, 
once you have the skills either you can work as a photographer on a particular brand because every brand right now needs a photographer to take care of their images and their content full time or you can work as a freelance photographer uh, you know catering to multiple brands and clients uh, by finding them and pursuing them on social media platforms this is for right. the beginners or right. amateurs or hobbyists who want to pursue it or even for entrepreneurs who are starting their own business and they want beautiful images online for their uh, promotion of their brand or their videos once they learn it they can use it you know that's a better method to showcase their work well lit well colored so for st- uh, this is one method for beginners Uh, for which definitely i am also creating courses for beginners right now which would be available in some time so that they can uh, really uh, move faster to their success ladder by getting the job they want as a photographer or pursue these skills and do their own thing okay okay so uh, this was more traditional uh, uh, this is for the beginners yeah. for now if yeah. i consider uh, i would uh, take myself as a photographer with more than you know 16 to 20 years of experience and a lot of photographers who are in the advertising profession for 20 years have been doing commercial photography meeting clients now at this stage when you cannot meet the clients and you still want to pursue photography how do you go ahead so i kept asking myself this question what are the mm-hmm. other ways i can do photography and keep it continuing um so uh, rather than just doing the photography which you are doing for clients if you can find other verticals in photography yeah. which can feed your business that means rather than only doing 100% commercial photography with live clients if you could provide something virtually to a uh, clients or your audience you can have three to four different verticals and the mm-hmm. pressure all your eggs are not in the same basket and you you are not under the pressure to receive results only from one category so i created another which is known as stop motion animation videos which is for people who want to learn videos but are photographers mm. because still photography was one aspect which was helping clients most of the clients came to me that can you even provide us with videos mm. which makes their product and their brand more interactive because mm. you have music to it you have movement to it and people relate to the moving yeah. parts more so I learned and created another vertical which is known as the stop motion video market which I provide with still photography still in yeah. video yeah then I realized what else I am good at which can really help and serve the market in terms of photography right so I questioned myself and realized Rohit you have 20 years of experience as a photographer and if you could teach this to thousands of students mm-hmm. or amateurs yeah who want to learn photography and Mm. do not know the right place to go to wow you have a platform so yeah. my third vertical came as rohit gandhi photography mm. services in terms of uh, education okay. for which i am creating uh, courses right now okay and so instead of one i have three verticals right now which are cave catering to the complete photography audience so my audience is yeah. not only the client who wants to showcase their product but mm. for people who want to learn photography and clients and people who want to learn videos at the same time so awesome. it's yes yeah. since it's been divided into a 33% 33% 33% i am not 100% uh, mm. only getting results from one but if one goes down the second one works so the second one work doesn't work the third one works at a particular yeah. so all three are working in tandem and i'm getting the results so this is the mm-hmm. strategy that you have to ask yourself and find methods how you can help people mm-hmm. and what all you can create not just only mm-hmm. still photography but yeah. what else with photography so guys let me, let me understand this better now now just to kind of put this all together in uh, in, in a very simple uh, consolidated uh, understanding and and that would be that uh, you obviously know traditional photography and there are plenty of uh, in photographers already in in that space and also teaching uh, including uh, you know studio studios that uh, you know lend you out their services but now that that the digital space is there Uh, what you are doing is you've got more time on your hands to actually do the photography work because you can depend on digital tools that automate your uh, your client reach your outreach your marketing your advertising as a photographer and a, as a freelance professional and at the same time you're looking at uh, two very niche uh, areas which which seemingly if if I'm uh, you know correct me if I'm wrong uh, you talked about tabletop photography and you talked about uh, stop motion which is also part of tabletop because all you need is a table to kind correct, of start off correct. with and then you can go and expand your uh, your so work so why would you first question you ask it 
ask yourself is under these circumstances when i am locked inside and i cannot meet people how can i make my photography abilities my talent more resourceful mm. then i realize see i work as a lifestyle uh, people photographer as well as a table top photographer but under the circumstances mm. my interaction with people has become very limited yeah uh, i cannot bring a bigger team uh, you know to work obviously the more you go outdoors the budgets also go really really high for a client and the clients mm. do not want to spend that much money today yeah, then i realized my yeah. services as a table top photographer are really really ca- helpful and very effective where i can do stop motion animation videos and still photography in a small studio which i can create for myself okay and uh, uh, i do not need a big team of people i can yeah. only have a one person or i can even manage my Self entire studio well. yeah. uh, with all the tools and instruments which i have and provide the services so mm. i am uh, minimizing my costs yeah. and minimizing my risk of interacting with more people and more time on hands more time yeah and uh, keeping my budgets in control and yeah. still giving the results to people who definitely need on a daily basis mm. uh, you know the results to run their content on the social media platforms okay and and we spoke about the course uh, fairly vaguely i mean we didn't get into the integrity but uh, let me just share with you guys what all can you achieve uh, if you were to uh, take on uh, the curriculum which rohit has been building for some time now and and that experience uh, has come in because of his struggles in the last two years as a photographer and not being able to get uh, enough projects uh, and and a lot of our uh, you know creative industry professionals have been through that so uh, in terms of what you can achieve is perhaps the deeper understanding of the current affairs of commercial photography and uh, the tools that are powering up this entire ecosystem uh, through the help of social media platforms and uh, what you would also be learning is how to influence the voice of brands through that uh, uh, educational uh, module curriculum that that you're building what kind of future career pathways can one pursue um, and also how how you can take advantage of the the current uh, current scenario that we have today uh, which is quite uncertain clearly with the pandemic still in place and how you can uh, use commercial photography as as a great tool uh, even as a novice even as uh, even as a person who is who has simply got one uh, little cell phone in his or her hand and and that should suffice so nothing to state of the art quite definitely clearly. definitely i would definitely say that the camera which you have in your pocket is the most effective camera and the you that is where you start from i made uh, you know a lot of my stop motion videos on my phone and they were beautiful good resolution and definitely look very professional in nature and same i use my camera for doing a lot of table top photography work hmm. because on social media platforms it's not the print uh, size yeah. or the resolution but if you have the clarity of, and you're getting good lights and using your still uh, cell phone uh, or your mobile phone for doing photography uh, definitely it really helps and mm-hmm. uh, you know um, you don't have to wait for don't anything wait. in particular to start your journey okay So guys this kind of this makes me think from a academician point of view as well as a mental coach point of view as well that if you were uh, studying at college and you wanted to uh, impress your clients or uh, your uh, you know your prospective uh, internships uh, where uh, your bosses are looking at or the managers are looking at something little unique and different and also effective for their own businesses as well uh, you could you could perhaps look at uh, stop motion uh as as a tool to make a portfolio your entire portfolio could be a stop motion uh, video which could be quite enticing and a completely new way to brand yourself and your work and uh, it is doable from a from a simple table top like rohit has just mentioned and and i think that uh, brings us to this uh, question when can we possibly have this course uh, floated out when do you think uh, you want to uh, place this for the for the public for the for the aspiring people to uh, take on so oh, definitely you know that is uh, what i have been working on for you know the entire last year and uh, middle of this year i look forward to bring the course by end of uh, september okay uh, but that would be the beginner's course and mm-hmm. then people uh, you know who are more interested in going deeper into the subject we can uh, assess uh, you know uh, the next level yeah. or the mastermind and people who are already photographers who want to go into stop motion content videos 
these things will uh, continuously be floating and uh, people will get the information on my Instagram platform uh, because that's a place where people mm. follow and understand what are the updates and everything for yeah. the show. And uh, um, uh, that's my platform, Rohit okay. Gandhi Photography School. Okay. Is where yeah. uh, uh, you know people get updated, and uh, that's the so same. we we will be sharing this uh, in the in the comment box. Uh, I know this podcast is still uh, very early in its stages, but do like, share, and comment. And uh, uh, like I said, I will have Ruit's details uh, and his website and his uh, you know contact details mentioned uh, in the discussion box uh, where uh, people can just reach out to you directly. I hope that helps. Uh, in, in time as, as and when you have uh, more uh, content being floated and I'm quite excited uh, personally as well to be maybe part of that uh, course that you're talking about. Yes, definitely. I mean, uh, you know, after having experience for so many years, I always had that uh, thing, uh, you know, questioning me if all the information what I have, I do not share it with anybody, it stays with me. So I always realized it would always be great to help people who want to do the same thing what I wanted to do 15 years back and I had little support and I did all the hit and trials, assisted photographers for more, several years, read hundreds of books and uh, you know uh, created everything by learning from different places. Yeah. If I can provide them effectively at one place yeah. at a very nominal kind of cost. Uh, some you know that can really catalyze their career and bring mm-hmm. a lot of clarity to start immediately where the market is going right now. That that would be awesome. I I, I really think uh, what you're doing is wonderful by consolidating all that twenty years of experience into maybe one module or one course or maybe uh, a set of uh, you know modules in a curriculum, and uh, that just supercharges and fast tracks your process as a creative Correct. and a professional. Uh, and as an aspiring expert in the space of uh, uh, any creative department really because photography like you said is is part of uh, pretty much all the sectors of the creative world uh, and including uh, corporates and startups so it's it's a vast space out there quite honestly and that's needless to say so with that I'd like to simply speculate that the next big tool for photographers perhaps is the tabletop photography and and looking at uh, a stop motion uh, would you would you like to perhaps uh, shed some light on that? See, I would say what is available to you with minimum uh, trouble is yeah. something which you should immediately start. Hmm. If you are at your place, you don't cannot afford a studio. Yeah. If you have a table, you can arrange a couple of lights. You can use your cell phone. Then tabletop photography is the most important thing True. because everybody wants to sell a product. If, if you want to sell a product, wow, tabletop photography really works for you. If you want to sell a video for the product, stop motion hmm. works for you. So I in tandem work with clients who want the video and the still together under the same umbrella and it is really effective because uh, at the same place, not only do I give them this, the results for images, I also create videos Yeah, and that is a very fast moving market and the videos are intentionally done hmm. uh, with products or conceptually with paper so that you do not have to have talent once hmm. you have talent then you have <laughs> makeup then you have styling and you are just adding everything and making it all the more complicated you're completely in charge and in control hmm. if you can work at your own place with a couple of flights create beautiful stuff and thousands of people thousands of clients are waiting hmm. for you to give them what you have yeah. right now. You can be frugal about it in yes. a creative way. Yes. Obviously, yes. So I encourage awesome. everybody to start with that. Awesome. Well, Rohit, uh, I think this has been a wonderful talk. Uh, I, I, I really do wish that, uh, you know, we can have you again on board. Maybe you talk about your starting years uh, as, as a student, what you did to build your portfolio, what you did to get clients and your first client perhaps and how you went about uh, uh, in, in Bombay, I think you were in Mumbai when, when you started off and, and you shot a lot of celebrities and you've been doing that since, uh, since the time. And uh, that would be a nice change. And then once you have the course with us, uh, it'll be nice to have maybe a, a little, uh, you know, a sneak peek or a, a kind of a little boot camp. And it'll be, it'll be nice to uh, be part of that. So thank you, Rohit, for your time. And, uh, you know, this is special for us because this is the first, the very first podcast of the Speculative Monk Show. And uh, look forward to your future, your work, and uh, God bless. Thank, Thank you so you. much. Thank you it. very much, Anupam, for having me here. And uh, congratulations for starting with the podcast, which is going to help people uh, keep informed about all the different niches and you know, spheres in the creative uh, uh, universe. 
and i think uh, people are looking forward to understand and know how things can help them faster from the experts who have already done it been there done yeah. that and uh, i look forward to uh, you know uh, being a part of it again in the near future and serve and help students thank you rohit that's a that's a really nice ending note so guys uh, like i said do like share and comment this is your host anupam tomar signing off Let's catch up real soon. Take care. Bye. Guys, if you like the content of this channel, do like, share, and subscribe to the bell icon on the YouTube channel. This is your host Anupam Tomar signing off. Until next time.